Hi! Today I'm going to be doing a good old fashioned anti haul because I have so far filmed this video twice and it has not gone well, so I'm hoping the third time is, is indeed the charm. <laughs> so I appreciate that anti hauls aren't as big of a thing nowadays because one of the big things now is the Will I Buy It series, which I still like, but I personally perform better in videos when I'm either talking about something I passionately love or I have passionate feelings against. Me talking about things that I'm indifferent towards doesn't really make a very interesting video, so I would rather play to my own strengths and go on a bit of a a bit of a rant and maybe roast some products that I'm not really a huge fan of. Some of these products are more of a withle but I don't need it kind of thing. And then some of them it's like, this is garbage. I don't want to come across as saying that, oh, this is boring and this is like no one needs this, no one wants this, because that annoys me sometimes. I feel like there's a little bit of a, a snobbery at times, and I want to look at products fairly, but also I want to speak my truth, because a lot of people have been speaking the truth lately on YouTube. I'm going to start with a product that I'm very vehemently against, and that is the Boy de Chanel makeup line. <laughs> oh my god, this is... I'm be honest, this is kind of pathetic, because it's... Designed as a makeup line for men, and the products include a foundation line which contains only four shades, and a brow definer which you can get pretty much anywhere, but it's in black packaging. The way they're marketing this is ridiculous. It's like, oh, we're making a revolutionary makeup line for men that they can use to improve their appearance, which is what makeup is generally for, but you can do it without sacrificing your masculinity. On one hand, I kind of get the intention behind that, but if you really want to try and get men into makeup, just tell them to buy the regular makeup. Like, for all the efforts of brands these days to try and be more inclusive of different gender identities, this feels like a massive step back. This is like going the complete opposite direction. It's not progressive, it's not revolutionary, it's... it's stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some advice from a perspective of a man who wears makeup. Generally, I will have some sort of concealer to cover up any spots or red patches. I'll fill in my brows a little bit and then, I don't know, maybe sculpt with a bit of a, a contour so I look a little less chubby. Like, that's it. And you can get those products from anywhere. You can get like a four pound concealer. Like my brow pomade today is NYX for a fiver. Like, you don't need to buy specifically gender-oriented makeup products. And you especially don't need to buy expensive luxury men's makeup. It's honestly pathetic. <laughs> Just buy regular makeup and get over the whole, like, I know it's difficult for a, a man to go into a, a product line that is very is targeted towards women predominantly. That can be difficult, but eventually stop caring. Like, the only person who is stopping you from getting that is yourself. So just get a regular concealer and a regular brow pencil and work with that because you don't need Chanel to give you a separate makeup line. Don't buy into this shit. Also in the topic of luxury makeup, I really wanted to talk about the Supreme lipstick and how it is pointless. <laughs> there are so many places you can get a red lipstick from, but people will get excited over this because it's a Supreme lipstick. Like, as a collector's item, I can see the appeal, but I'm not really a clout chaser, so I'll stick with my regular red lipsticks. It, I don't need a supreme lipstick. The next product I want to talk about is a little more of a case of I'm not buying this, but I can see why they did it, and that is the Colourpop and Disney Designer Collection. I see why they did that, because the number of people who love Disney, the number of people who love Disney princesses, it's a very smart move to do that. It's something that's going to appeal to a lot of people. They're onto a winner with this, but I'm at peace with the fact that nothing in this collection really appeals to me. Like, the lipsticks are nice, but they come a dime a dozen. Like, you can get them pretty much anywhere. If I were to get one of those lipsticks, I'd only really get it on impulse. Like, I wouldn't be excited for one specific colour, but they look nice. And then the palette looks very standard. It's not the type of palette I'd be really excited about, but considering this collection is supposed to be reaching a really wide audience, I can see why they picked the colours. The anti-hauling of this collection isn't so much about negative feelings, but it's more about, like, this just isn't something that 
I'm interested in. Even though I really like Disney princesses, because I am a gay of a certain age, we all have some kind of affinity with Disney princesses, pretty much. One thing is, yes, you have like Cinderella and Ariel and Snow White. Where's Rapunzel? Like, that's my favourite one. You didn't make a Rapunzel lipstick? Oh. She's the best princess. Feel free to argue with me in the comments, but like, where was the Rapunzel lipstick? I want that one. I think we do need to talk about the new Kat Von D collection. Even though I'm not buying her makeup anymore, I'm not supporting her brand anymore, I do still like to see what, what like, the, the problematic brands are bringing out, because I'm just generally curious about that. So the new collection she has is the Fetish Collection. I will say that I like the face palette, I think that's really cute. I was talking with my sister about it, and she loves the colour scheme of that palette, and I agree. But the eyeshadow palette is a different story. I feel like there are some select tones in this palette that are really nice, but <laughs> this just feels so dingy. It feels dark, and it doesn't feel grungy, it doesn't feel edgy, it just feels like a cake left out in the rain. It's like the puddle palette, and the, the packaging, it's like, it's like a cheese board. It's like the cheese board palette. It's not exciting to me, it's just very, very meh. And for a palette called Fetish, for it to be that conservative is, it's kind of surprising, but it's also, you're kind of failing the name. You brought out a palette that is the complete antithesis of what it's supposed to be. Well done! The lipstick set is nothing special, because it has three repeat shades that you can get separately, or you can dupe. I believe one of the colours is Outlaw which I have a dupe of in the Liquid Suede by NYX in Kitten Heels, which is like the ideal red lipstick. <laughs> what is that a miss? Though I do like the new shade in that set, the latex shade, I think that's cute, but I believe NYX has a Cosmic Metals in a similar colour, so don't really need to support Miss Kat Von D. Not today. She is bringing out some other stuff, she's bringing out makeup wipes, because because everyone wants Kat Von D makeup wipes, that's just like, it's like goals. And then the other thing is a magnetic palette. But she's done this revolutionary thing. This is really exciting. She's done a, like, a magnetic palette, but she's cut the corners off. Because everyone wants that in a magnetic palette, clearly. What is she thinking? Why cut the corners off a magnetic palette? That's like the least useful thing you could do to a magnetic palette. Just give us one with corners, or don't give us one at all, because we can buy we can buy other brands of magnetic palettes. This is a really interesting one I want to talk about. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. Now we saw the outside of this palette first, and it had this really nice, it was like a glitter front. They didn't do the carpet packaging for this one, so if you vehemently hate the carpet packaging of Anastasia palettes, then this is, is good. But then we looked inside... <laughs> what is this? You have this decadent sparkly packaging with like the nice font on the front, and these are the colours you put in? Other than that one really interesting coral shade, if you cover that up, this palette is like background noise. There's nothing that really excites me about this. Even though I generally like silver eyeshadows, this is one of the worst ways to incorporate silver eyeshadows because it just blends in with all of the neutrals. I feel like Anastasia's palettes have progressively been getting less interesting. At first I didn't really like Soft Glam, but I've grown to really appreciate the style of it and I feel like it's really good for getting all of those those essential neutral tones, it's very bridal. And then Novena I liked, but I thought needed more purple. I feel like it wasn't really as exciting as I wanted it to be. And then this one has like one nice shade with that coral, and then the rest of it is just like, what's the point? Even the marketing wasn't that good, it was, it just kind of was, there you go, there's the palette! I remember the the marketing for the Novena palette, regardless of your thoughts of the Novena palette itself, the marketing where it had like those short videos, where it had Novena in the car, it was like, it was such a cool campaign, and this sultry campaign just feels like they didn't even try that much. And another thing I'm not really huge on is the PR box. They put on like expensive spray-painted roses that have been like spray-painted in gold, and it's like, I've 
I've really grown to not be a fan of wasteful PR packages. Like, if you're sending out makeup to someone, it doesn't need to be in, like, this fancy contraption with, like, a video screen and spray-painted gold roses. If I'm receiving a package of makeup, I just want the box with the makeup in it, obviously securely wrapped. But other than that, I don't give a shit. Does it really matter to have that fancy of a PR box? Though I will say, I do like the metallic lipstick set that Anastasia's doing this year. And I'd say the glitters look nice, but I heard that only two of them are eye safe. I just feel like that's really counterintuitive. Logically, just do ones that are all eye safe, and then there'll be less confusion, there'll be less problems. Just what's the point of doing a lot of glitters that aren't even eye safe? Where are you going to put them? Are you going to put them on your neck or something? Just really? Is there anything else? No, I don't think I need to talk about anything else with Anastasia. I remember when Anastasia used to be really interesting, and it feels like they aren't so interesting anymore. And it's sad, because I really want to- I really want to like them, because they're a brand I want to root for, and I'm just- I don't have the means to root for them anymore. And that does make me a little bit sad. I want to talk about Zodiac makeup, because I feel like Zodiac has been a big theme this year. I'm tired of it. I think I was tired of it by the time, like, the third Zodiac product that came out. I feel like it is a really good tactic to get people to buy makeup, because if you have Zodiac products and you have people who match it to their Zodiac sign and be like, Ooh, so I'm a Sagittarius, what am I gonna get? Ooh, a purple lipstick. First of all, you can get a purple lipstick pretty much anywhere. Secondly, do you really want that purple lipstick or do you just want it because it matches your star sign? It's a very smart technique to get people to buy makeup that they wouldn't already want. It might fool some people, but it can't fool me. Now, I get the appeal of fun themes and nice packaging and gimmicks. I like that. I like tacky packaging. I like strange gimmicks, but I feel like I'm seeing through this one quite a bit. It's a very smart tactic to get people to buy makeup, but I see through it now. It's like that video of Bad Baby where it's I see the type of person you are. Because I do now. You are a person who wants me to buy makeup. I almost forgot about this one, but I really wanted to mention the Sugar Pill and Trixie Mattel collab. I'm not going to be buying this because, one, I don't really care that much for Trixie Mattel. Two, this palette isn't very good. And three, I really don't need to buy into this. A lot of the hype around this is that it is a Trixie Mattel collab, which I can understand because she's very popular, but the products themselves just aren't really that exciting. I do like the lipstick, I think the lipstick is cute, and I would get that if that was separate, but the palette is just very standard. It's standard neutrals, which I appreciate that Trixie wears standard neutrals, but do you really go to Sugar Pill for standard neutrals? It's like going to McDonald's for a salad. It's like going to a prostitute for a hug. What's the point of that? I just, I really feel like the popularity of this palette is that it is a Trixie Mattel collab, and it's the power of fandom. Obviously, if you have your faves and you want to support your faves, feel free. Even as like a collector's item, I get that. If Britney Spears brought out a makeup line tomorrow, I'd probably be buying lots of it. I already have a perfumes, so I can definitely see the power of fandom, but this just isn't striking a chord with me. If any other company or anyone else had released this palette, it would have been red into the ground, into an early grade. There would be sirens going off and protests. Like, imagine if Tarte released this, or Too Faced. You know people would be complaining about this, but, but because it's got, got Trixie's name on it, it is near untouchable. I'm sorry if you really do want to get this collab. If you want to support one of your favourite people, then that's great. Like, I feel like Sugar Pill should do a collection with someone like Aja, because I feel like she has such an eclectic style, and I would be buying that, but not this one. The last product I want to talk about is, it's something that comes from a brand that I really like, and it is the Revolution Advent Calendar for this year. It's like, the really big one, which is, I think it's like £80, and which I've seen it in Superdrug now, because the sets are coming into Superdrug stores, and it's huge. I like the Revolution gift sets, I mean, I just bought the Chocolate Heart gift set, and I've reviewed that on my channel, <laughs> convenient plug, but this set in particular, I've watched some unboxings of this set, and the products in it feel like, I don't want to come across the wrong way, but it feels like 
old leftover products that they couldn't sell on their own, so they're putting them in an £80 advent calendar. A lot of the products are actually things that have been on sale on the Revolution Beauty website. Things like the lip lacquers, then the smoky palette they have, which is a, a naked smoky do. I believe that was £2 on sale. This kind of just feels a little bit like this is the stuff that they, they couldn't give away. And I, I feel quite bad saying that because I love Revolution as a brand. I really like what they stand for. I really like their products. I mean, I have a lot of their products, but I don't really like how this has been set up. If you want my advice, just go on the Revolution Beauty website or go to Superdrug and get the specific products you want because that will be far more worthwhile than getting an £80 advent calendar because you're getting a lot of products that you might not even use and they're just going to be lying around and it's it borders on a rip-off. Don't, don't buy into this, please. If you want my recommendations on some more worthwhile Revolution products, feel free to ask me because I have some recommendations. There are some really good products, but there's also some not good products. I feel like you need to be a bit mindful sometimes. But again, I still really like them as a brand and I'm really happy with a chocolate heart, but I will not be getting this advent calendar. Sorry. And that is all the products I have for today. Thanks for not clicking off halfway through the video, I really appreciate that. This is my first anti-haul and I hope that I can improve them later on because it is a format I really enjoy watching and I want to make good content based on stuff that I like. I want these to be good. If I've mentioned any of your favourite products in this video, feel free to defend them in the comments section. I would love to hear your thoughts. I want to make some friends on here, please. Also, if you want to see more anti-hauls, feel free to tell me so I, so I know. I really want to respond to feedback and make things that people want to see. And if you did like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. If you want to follow me online, feel free to subscribe to my channel below. I am Ari Lynette Work on Twitter and Ari Lynette on Instagram. Thanks for spending time with me today and I love you for watching. Bye!